if you disassemble the smartphone, you would have uh, the body part, which could be made up of metals or metallic alloys or ceramics or glass or plastic or a combination of these materials. So a foam manufacturer need some materials manufacturing companies that the work with to supply them uh, with the materials to produce the body of the phones. Or at least have a unit of their manufacturing that is responsible for producing the needed materials. Then there is the battery, which is more complicated. Uh, besides its uh, metallic composition, the battery is also comprised of uh, some, some chemicals. So again, the phone manufacturer, while they may need a battery manufacturing company to supply them with the batteries to produce the phones, the battery manufacturer also needs some metal manufacturing companies and chemical manufacturers to supply them with metals and chemicals that will be used in producing the batteries. And there's the screen, which enables our interactions with the phone. And the screen is often comprised of different kinds of oxides. You have metallic and uh, non-metallic oxide. So again, the phone manufacturer need the service of a chemical manufacturing company to supply them with the chemicals that will be used in producing the screen. And there's the act of the device, the semiconductor chip, uh, which is comprised of over 60 different kinds of elements, including metals and non-metals. Uh, so there's a lot of companies in the network of ship makers that they work with to obtain different materials that is then used in producing the ships and are then used, ultimately used in uh, producing the phone. Now, we could go on and on to repeat this supply chain analysis for the other part of the phone, uh, the speakers, the camera, the motherboard, and its other internal components. But I won't bore you doing that. Uh, and, and actually, we could extend this analysis to different products in different sectors of our economy. And what we would find is that there are a whole lot of these companies across many different industries that perhaps we may not know anything about as final consumers, but that really are the ones making key items and components that ultimately helps to enrich our lives. There are companies in a set of industries I would refer to in this talk as the foundational industries. They are the real MVPs, the primary drivers of our economies. Uh, Apple has over 200 of them that it relies on to procure components for the iPhone and its other devices. But it would seem to me today that we might not be paying sufficient attention to these foundational industries, that because of our increasingly dominant digital culture, we might be getting too distracted away from them, and dangerously so, because of the very crucial roles that these industries play in enabling our digital and modern world. By 2030, it is estimated that 2.1 million manufacturing jobs could be unfilled in the U.S. alone. And one of the major reasons given for the identified skill shortages is young people's lack of interest in manufacturing, uh, which really is about their desire to go work in uh, places uh, that seem relevant or that are popular, or in sectors of the economy uh, that are getting at their attention or being popularized. Uh, beside, of course, uh, making much money. So you have them being, being interested in, in, in this uh, industry. Now, I am not painting a picture, a picture to disparage the importance or say uh, that only manufacturing is necessary, that other sectors of the economy, economy in digital world are not necessary. No, but I will show you that, I mean, the financial investment direction may be impacting these trends negatively. I mean, with a VC investment trend like this, it is easy to see how and why a young person will decide to go work in, say, a crypto startup or gaming company rather than manufacturing. And again, and I'm not painting the picture to disparage the importance of crypto or gaming on or any web solutions. I am rather emphasizing the disturbingly low level of attention that we pay to essentials like 
industrial automation, especially when the resources are there given the kind of financial watches we can pull when we feel something is popular or we make us a lot of money or we make us money quickly. I mean, industrial automation cuts across all areas of manufacturing and, and the several foundational industries you can think of. Chemicals, mining, metals, power generation, automobile, uh, construction, hospitals, you name it. Which, by the way, represent more than half of the real global economy. And in fact, uh, it may interest you to know that manufacturing has the highest multiplier effect of any economic sector in the US, with $2.79 added to the economy for every $1 spent in manufacturing. Now, understandably, projects in manufacturing and these so-called foundational industries can be capital intensive. Uh, it can take a long time after investing millions of dollars before an investor can start expecting returns, good returns or dividends. Uh, but therein also lies our opportunities for innovation. As a chemical engineer, personally, I know that uh, there is an innovation opportunity to uh, develop advanced process modeling and computational chemistry tools to speed up process and materials discovery so that new materials and processes that will result in better performance in a sustainable manner for a growing consumer population in our world can be readily discovered and developed, as well as opportunities to uh, minimize turnaround times in constructing new manufacturing plants so that a plant can more quickly add value to customers and investors. The fact really is that there's a whole lot of innovation opportunities across different sectors and fields in the foundational industries that we might not be capturing at all or not capturing fast enough because we are too carried away, too distracted in the seemingly convenient part of the digital economy. I love the way Construct Capital described this problem on their website. Unrealized innovation due to chronic underinvestment. And the consequences of inadequate attention to these foundational industries might be catching up with us already. There is a global ship shortage crisis that is ravaging us now with automobile plants cutting down on production. And of course, investors are now pouring money into ship making since there is an apparent opportunity. But I bet you would agree with me that this is a reactionary approach to a crisis in an industry that ordinarily shouldn't suffer from a lack of continuous attention and innovation. As we look forward to the future, with excitement for new possibilities like urban air taxi and quantum computing, it is even more important that we are deliberate in paying sufficient attention to these foundational industries that are required, of course, for this uh, exciting future. The question really is, how do we do this amidst growing distractions in our information age? How do we ensure we keep our attention where they are really needed? How do we, we focus our attention? I don't have answers to this question, but I have a suggestion. I think our definition of sustainability needs to clearly reflect the importance of the foundational industry. I don't think it is sustainable to let attention to to, 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 get, to drift too far away from them. I think it is important for us to be deliberate in planning to identify them, classify them, and innovate around them. In fact, solutions to thorny problems like climate change are best obtained through innovation in the foundational industries, which requires us to look at things from the basics, from the first principles. But first, we need to clearly define and establish what a foundational industry is. What really is a foundational industry? How do we determine and say that this is a foundational industry? And I don't think that is a simple question by any means. Uh, and you can imagine the complexity from the supply chain analysis around the production of a phone. I mean, one can begin to wonder what really is the starting point for all these activities that ultimately lead to the production of a phone. Uh, what would we say it is? the mining industry, or the metal industry, or what? Uh, it is not so straightforward. 
since these industries are in fact interwoven. But perhaps we can all agree that there is a foundational chemistry industry, or that at least one is not industry we can say or determine to be a foundational industry is the chemistry industry. Now, I'm with good reason. Now, I'm using the word chemistry rather than chemical intentionally. Uh, I mean, there is the so-called chemical industry, which, is, which we all know, which is well known. But I'm using, yeah, chemi saying, using the term chemistry industry because we're trying to define an industry from the basics. If you look at the history of civilization with regards to the different kind of tools and resources that becomes crucial at different times. One thing you would find to be common with all of these resources and tools is the chemistry. You may be, could be tempted to think that all of these resources, are, the, what, what is common with them is the fact that they are metal. But then there was this stone age, of which stone is not a metal. So it is really about the chemistry. Now, the interesting thing is that we have a template, we actually have a template for this foundational chemistry industry, the good old periodic table. And imagine, imagine this table becomes a basis for economic conversation in the media, beyond the classrooms. Imagine media conversations that shows how this element form the building blocks of our society. Conversation that shows how our economies are built upon them. The ripple effect on education alone could be substantial, and it could help to bridge the gap between the academia and the real world, and boost our innovation capabilities. Another way I think the classification of the foundational industry might be done is on the basis of activity. Certain activities are basic in our world, irrespective of uh, the times and changes, like mobility, right from bad, uh, moving ourselves and items from one place to another is instinctive to us. So it is natural that we devise sophisticated means and devices to transport ourselves and goods from one place to another. Um, and really, it is not about the device and means, it is more about the art. It is not about the cars, the airplanes, or the siblings. These are just means to help us perform the essential function of our mobility. S some other things could have actually been invented to replace these uh, devices that could even do better. But the primary thing there is mobility. So I'm using the term here, mobility, as uh, another word to describe a foundational industry. In any case, I'll be concluding, I'll be stopping with these two examples and to conclude, emphasize that deliberate attempts like this to understand and classify the foundational industries could help to ensure we don't lose track of what really needs attention in our world, which is important in building a continually sustainable and prosperous world. Thank you.